Thank you, Celine. Okay, so uh, yeah, I am a PhD student in the University of Hamburg working in the SPIN project. And my project is the number 4.2, which is nonlinear seismology meets structural health monitoring. But today I'm gonna talk about exploring ultrasound elastic regimes in concrete structures. And uh, today I'm gonna show you one way in which uh, these three different uh, elasticity theories can complement each other in the task of understanding or describing more accurately uh, the physical state of materials for construction, uh, specifically uh, reinforced concrete. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this uh, linear elasticity theory, uh, classical nonlinear elasticity, and non-classical nonlinear elasticity in this uh, 3D empty space. And I'm gonna fill this up um, along with the presentation. To do so, uh, I'm gonna use this database that we recorded last November in the frame of the, th of the SPIN project. Um, so the, it was a collaboration between University of Hamburg, LMU, and BAM. And here we recorded uh, wave propagation at different uh, scales. Uh, we used 60 sensors, vertical uh, geophones, that system, and also embedded ultrasound sensors. There you can observe um, the structural distribution of this, of this bridge and also the location of these ultrasound sensors. So we have two pairs in the north side and two pairs in the south side. Uh, this is a side view of this, of this structure. In this part, you can observe uh, the pretension system that allows us to compress the structure uh, under controlled manner. We use this uh, pretension system to compress the structure at these five different uh, compression states. And at each compression state, we made uh, two different experiments. The first one, in the, uh, which, represented, which is represented by the line, uh, black line, corresponds to information that we recorded when the bridge was in a rest state. So no external perturbation besides the compression. And uh, the blue line corresponds to information that we recorded when, um, this, when we hit the structure with a hammer hit, um, one hammer hit every five minutes, in total three hammer hits per uh, compression state. In general, you can observe two main stages in, in, uh, in this experiment. The one in which we um, uh, decompress the, bri the bridge and the one in which we compress again the, the bridge. So uh, in what follows, I'm gonna use this color code just to make it easy to understand a little bit. So red, the reddish colors corresponds to results or information that we recorded in the north side, and the greenish corresponds to, uh, to the south side, left and right. So I'm gonna start analyzing uh, these results in terms of linear elasticity. To do so, I'm gonna use the concept of uh, P-wave velocity. So this is basically ultrasound pulses that we recorded in these four different locations. We can observe some similarities in the polarization, but some differences in amplitude, phase, and also p wave time arrival. So we know the, the distance between transducer and receivers, then we can easily obtain uh, the p wave velocity in these four different locations. Uh, this cartoon here is a representation of the top view of this bridge. We can observe uh, the results that we obtained. In general, they are above uh, 4,400 meters per second, and according with some international norms, we can consider this, the quality of this concrete as an excellent quality. And then we can start using this 3D space and then drop these values in this, in this axis. Then uh, let's move to the concept of classical nonlinear elasticity. And I'm gonna analyze this uh, by using the acoustoelastic constant uh, um, uh, effect. So this acoustoelastic constant allows us to analyze uh, changes in the physical uh, properties of the material. It can be uh, elastic modulus or velocity at different stresses or strain uh, stages. Uh, in general, this is a linear behavior in which the independent term gives us information about the initial, the initial velocity values in the material. And the slope is precisely uh, the thing that is called um, acoustoelastic constant. This acoustoelastic constant is also in terms of this beta value, which is a purely nonlinear um, elasticity constant. And at the same time, this is a linear combination of LMM, which corresponds to uh, Mornagan constants. And E is the Jung modulus. Um, I'm gonna estimate this, uh, this quantity using dB over B and uh, changes in, in stress. And this is the, the thing that we have here, vertical axis TV over B, horizontal uh, axis uh, compression states. This is the information that we estimated when we release the pretension in the structure. This is the fitting that I obtained. Therefore, the 
uh, acoustoelastic constant. Now this is the information that I obtained uh, when we release, when we compress again the structure and we can obtain another different uh, acoustoelastic constant. So at each location we can estimate two different acoustoelastic uh, uh, constants. And we can do the same thing in all the four different locations. So by now we're just considering the acoustoelastic constant with uh, best fitting. We can observe these values here. So we have uh, alpha one one, one corresponds to the direction in which the wave is propagating and the other uh, suffix corresponds to the direction of the deformation. Uh, we can observe high acoustoelastic constants in the north side, low in the south side. And yeah, we can drop these values again in this, in this space. Now, uh, finally, we can analyze also non-linear, non-classical non-linear effects. And I'm gonna use the concept of slow dynamics to do that. So slow dynamics is basically this relaxation process in which um, the physical properties of the material tends to recover its original values after it has been perturbed. So we can, we can estimate uh, these relaxation curves uh, with the information that we recorded of the hammer hits. And of course, uh, we can use these mathematical models to try to estimate these relaxation times in the structure. This is uh, yeah, the mathematical model that I'm gonna use. This is still a work in progress because we have like 96 different uh, relaxation curves that are different uh, in many senses. So we're still uh, analyzing this type of, of data. So just to summarize, a little bit more important than just uh, uh, linear elasticity theories are the questions that they help us to answer. For example, um, in terms of non-linear elasticity, um, are the dynamic physical properties of the structure of materials changing? If so, what is the stress or strain rate of these changes? And if we can observe a uh, auto healing process, how long does it take for the structure to recover its uh, physical properties before the external deformation was applied? But this is again still work in progress. Thank you.